You got it. Well, solution to painful conditions can come in the way of surgery, and that includes back pain. There are some new advances involving spinal surgery and neurosurgery. Joining us to talk about that is Dr. John Biner, a spine surgeon with Hartford HealthCare's Orthopedic Connecticut Orthopedic Institute. Doctor, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So what are some conditions that might require back surgery? We see the variety of conditions in the spine, but mostly I see disc herniations or spinal stenosis, which is a condition where the body grows extra bone around joints and enlarges those joints. And so that can cause compression of the nerves also. Sometimes there's a disc herniation and stenosis at the same time. In the worst cases, it actually causes compression of the spinal cord. All right, can you explain how spine surgery and neurosurgery work together and how does it benefit the patient? In the old days, neurosurgery was trained to do the nerve work and orthopedic was trained to do the bony work. And since the spine has both of those tissues, uh, it took both surgeons and both specialty groups to really get the surgery right. In modern times, we've trained almost independently in a sense that most orthopedics can do the nerve work and most neurosurgeons can do the bony work. But in reality, it really is a benefit to the patient to have both surgeons involved. And there's lots of examples as to why that would be. Sometimes you just need a second opinion for a patient who's having a really trouble making a decision. And I've been a patient and had to make some decisions for my own body in surgery. And it helps to have somebody else that can guide you. Great. It's also helpful in surgery I'm sorry. No, I was going to uh, say, great point. Keep going. Yeah, it's, it's also helpful having two people in the surgery physically, especially if you work well with somebody. It's almost like having four hands instead of two. So the operative times are lower. The complications are lower. And as a result of that, the outcomes are better. And it's just like having two pilots flying a plane. It's, it's just it minimizes the risks of mistakes that way. Can you talk briefly about some of the latest advances in spine neurosurgery? There are two areas that have really come a long way in the past 10 years. Uh, one of those is motion sparing surgery, such as a disc replacement. Um, we did one of the first disc replacements at Mid-State Medical Center recently uh, in the lumbar spine. And this was for a young patient who had a, a pretty bad disc and uh, she was suffering from pain for years. So ha having a motion sparing device there will allow that m level to move and hopefully reduce the risk of breakdown at other levels. The other big advance that it's come along in spine surgery has been uh, minimizing operative times and sort of speeding up that process so that it minimizes the risk to the patient. And we we've been pretty good with that at Mid-State as well. All right, can you describe the safety measures that are being put in place if you need to have surgery during COVID? Sure, the, the hospitals are getting that part really right. Uh, every patient is screened before they have surgery, usually two to three days ahead. They have a test and they are asked to quarantine. Um, sometimes if they come in through the emergency room, they need to get a rapid test before they're admitted, but pretty much everybody that comes into the hospital has a known status, whether they're positive or negative. And so they sequester those patients that are positive, of course, but the anesthesia docs have done a great job with uh, protecting the staff in the operating room from aerosolization of the, of the body fluids and whatnot during intubation. So everybody double masks and uh, that part is, is really very protective. Great to hear. All right, Dr. John Biner, thank you so much for bringing us up to date. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.